I would like to show some historic pictures um, from the Baldwin collection of the Toronto Public Library. Um, so we have a, a feel of, of how this um, facility at Chalk River has evolved over time. Uh, in 1942, a British and French scientists arrived in Montreal with heavy water, which was smuggled from Norway to keep it out of Nazi hands. A year later, in 1943, President Roosevelt and Prime Minister Churchill created a committee that would co coordinate those two countries' nuclear weapons research, which included the work of the scientists who'd gone to Montreal from England. In April 1944, with C.D. Howe, who was then Canada's Minister of Munitions and Supply in attendance, that committee agreed that Canada should build a heavy water reactor to produce plutonium for nuclear weapons. So, um, plans were made to build nuclear reactors and plutonium separation plants at Chalk River. Um, that facility, Chalk River Labs, was established with no consultation or accommodation with Algonquin people who had never ceded their rights to the 3,700 hectare site. Uh, their exclusion from the land and the environmental degradation of the land and water when this picture was taken, CRL was still under construction when the war ended. Um, uh, Canada's co contribution to the nuclear weapons effort included mining uranium, for processing it at a federally owned facility in Fort Hope, and sending that uranium to the U.S. for weapons. Now, Canadian uranium may have been used in the bomb dropped on Hiroshima, but um, the plutonium used for the Nagasaki bomb was made in Hanford, Washington. Next slide, please. This shows Chalk River Labs in 1948, um, where the original 10 megawatt version of the NRX reactor had been completed a year earlier. Uh, plutonium was being extracted from uranium uh, that was irradiated in the NRX, and that plutonium was shipped to the U.S. for weapons. Um, subsequently, um, plutonium uh, was shipped in the form of irradiated targets uh, to the U.S., and that continued until the mid-1960s. Natural Resources Canada estimates that over half the nuclear waste at Chalk River, which includes contaminated buildings, buried wastes, soils, contaminated lands originated from Cold War weapons related activities. Next slide. John Bland, who was a McGill architecture professor, uh, developed the master plan for the town of Deep River in 1944. And this shows Deep River in 1948. The British brought a strong class system to the town. It said that wives of nuclear scientists had separate shopping hours from wives of technicians. Families who moved there considered themselves to be nuclear pioneers, but they were actually more like nuclear colonists because Algonquin families already living there were evicted to make way for the new planned community. Next slide. Next slide uh, shows an internal view of the original 10 megawatt NRX reactor. Uh, C.D. Howe believed that atomic energy would yield great profits to the government of Canada, both from plutonium sales and from nuclear power. He oversaw the creation of Atomic Energy of Canada Limited as a federal crown corporation in October 1952. But in December 1952, the NRX had a severe accident with fuel melting and a hydrogen explosion. A flatbed truck was used to haul the intensely radioactive core to a nearby burial site. That truck was manned by a relay team of drivers, each spending just a few minutes behind the wheel before running away to make room for the next driver to limit their exposure to lethal radiation. The core was buried in the sand where it remains today. 
details of the accident were kept from the media to avoid creating public doubt about the government's investment in nuclear power. Next, please. A more powerful 42 megawatt version of the NRX was rebuilt on the original foundation. It started up in 1954 in the building shown in the foreground. Behind it, closer to the river, a larger 135 megawatt reactor, the NRU, is shown under construction. It ran from 1957 until it was shut down in March 2018, at which time it was the world's oldest operating nuclear reactor. The NRU was a major source of medical isotopes, which was a profitable business for AECL, but was privatized by the Mulroney government when Nordine was created, which left Canadian taxpayers responsible for the waste generated by isotope production. To the left of the NRX, you can see the plutonium recovery lab. All these facilities are now shut down, but they contain large quantities of long-lived radioactive waste for which no long-term management plans are, are yet in place. Next, please. ACL built four other nuclear reactors. The first was the NPD, which was the prototype for later can-do heavy water reactors. The NPD is located on the Ottawa River, 25 kilometers upstream from CRL. Um, a group of two American companies and SNC Lavalin is proposing to fill in this reactor with concrete and grout and abandon it in place, despite International Atomic Energy Agency recommendations that this is not an acceptable way to dispose of a reactor. The consortium of SNC Lavalin and two U.S. companies also wants to entomb the WR1 reactor which is located on the Winnipeg River. Disposal plans for the Douglas Point and Jean T1 reactors are still under consideration. There is no federal policy to guide decommissioning of nuclear reactors and other nuclear facilities. The consortium is shipping waste from all four of these reactor facilities to Chalk River for temporary storage. Next, please. Here is a 1974 picture of nuclear waste going into in-ground concrete structures at Chalk River. High-level waste fuel rods from the NRU and NRX reactors have been put in similar concrete structures. Water has entered some of these structures and the fuel rods are being taken out, dried, and put in newer above-ground temporary concrete structures. Next, please. Here's the 1984 picture of waste which originated from the Port Hope uranium processing facilities, which is being shoveled from a wheelbarrow into another in-ground concrete structure at Chalk River. Next, please. In 2011, Ian McLeod of the Ottawa Citizen wrote a detailed article entitled Chalk River's Toxic Legacy, portions of which are still available online. It describes the history of the CRL site, which is 150 kilometers upstream from Ottawa, and the major cleanup challenge there, which is recorded in public accounts of Canada as a $7 billion environmental liability. The consortium of SNC Lavalin and two U.S. companies has a $10 billion uh, or plus dollar contract, which lasts for 10 years, to operate all federal nuclear sites and is shipping waste that won't be entombed and that it would not get entombed in the NPD and WR reactors to Chalk River and that waste would be dumped in the giant uh, radioactive garbage mound which would be constructed next to the Perch Lake wetlands in the lower right portion of this slide. Commercial waste um, such as those from Nord Ions operations would also go in the garbage mound. Next, please. And this slide, also from Ian McLeod's article, shows a close-up of areas where wastes have been dumped and radioactive plumes of tritium and strontium-90 that have been created by these waste dumps. These plumes, uh, together with plumes of radioactive carbon-14, 
which has a 5,700 year half-life and isn't shown here, have contaminated lakes, streams, and wetlands on the Chalk River property. Radioactive leachate is entering the Ottawa River via Perch Creek in the very lower uh, left or right portion of the slide, and also um, through the Maskinonge Lake Chalk River drainage, which would be to the left of, of the slide. And, and the garbage mound would be in the lower right of the image and would drain through East Swamp Stream into Perch Lake. So I thought this was my uh, presentation um, and uh, I'm glad to have had this opportunity to tell you a bit about the history of, of Chalk River.